G'day everyone, it's me, Andrew Lewis, the Shit Flick Critic, with a travel story for you. So, a lot of you were very receptive to the idea of me telling some of my stories gradually, and uh, I'm about halfway through one of my longer edits. It should be up sometime towards the end of this week or the next week, and I figured in the interim, why not tell one of those stories? So, today's travel story is about the time that cops in Mississippi thought that I had abducted someone. So... Uh, I was traveling along the east coast of America and I met a British girl in Charleston. And we decided uh, she started in Chicago, I started in Canada. We basically slowly met up at the same spot and we decided to finish the rest of America together. She'd been spending a lot of money on bus tickets and I was saying, hey, you know, hitchhiking so cheap and so easy. And we decided to um, go to Florida and then the bottom of America together. So uh, we went to Miami and then we started hitchhiking at Tallahassee and we went from Tallahassee to Pensacola to Mobile and then we were in Mississippi and uh, I'm six foot four and this girl was about five foot two and she does look like she's in her teens. She looks like she's about 15 years old. So uh, we were hitchhiking together and I remember the first time we had any kind of dilemma was when we were in Mississippi, uh, cops pulled over and just said out of the window, they're like, oh, um, we've had a complaint that there might be some human trafficking going on. They're like, uh, and they looked at her, they're like, is everything okay? Like, you know, you know him and everything. She's like, yeah, you know, like he's from Australia. I'm from England. We're just hitchhiking together. They're like, okay. And when they drove away, I was like, okay, that was that was pretty weird, but, you know, no harm done. They just were checking. It looked like someone saw us and thought that maybe I'd kidnapped her or something. So we, uh, we eventually get a ride and we get taken to a place called Ocean Springs. And we decided there there was a really good spot to hitchhike. It was like an on-ramp onto a freeway and we started hitchhiking. And I made sure before I got to any state to make sure I knew what the hitchhiking laws were. So if I got in any trouble, I could just say, hey, look, we'll blah, 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 blah. So a cop pulls over while we're hitchhiking. And I said, look, I'll do the talking. I'll go over, I'll be super friendly. And uh, I'm sure there's no problem. He pulls over and he opens up his window and he is just the absolute embodiment of this stereotype of the Southern cop. Like he's wearing like a straight brim hat, sunglasses, he's chewing tobacco. You know, and uh, the window goes down and I walk over really happy. And I'm like, hello. Um, so I'm under the impression that hitchhiking is legal in Mississippi as long as you stick to you're on the arm of the road and the shoulder. And he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't care. I don't care about that. What you do is your business. I want to know what she's doing with you. And I was like, oh, um, well, uh, you know, we met and we're hitchhiking. He's like, I want to talk to her, actually. And then another cop car shows up, another cop car shows up, another cop car shows up, and then Border Patrol shows up. And by that point, I'm just absolutely shitting myself because Border Patrol came and he took both of our passports to process them to just see if, you know, if we were all legal and everything. And they took, Gemma was her name, the British girl, they took her into a police car and basically sort of interrogated her like it was... You know, it wasn't hostile, but they just wanted to get the answers out of her that they felt like they required. So in the meantime, I'm just absolutely shitting myself. I'm waiting outside and this cop was talking to me and I think he was just trying to keep me calm. And he was a lovely guy. And we had, a, you know, we were talking about weather in Australia, what we're doing while we're traveling and everything. But inside, I'm just absolutely shitting my pants because I'd only known Gemma for about let's say two weeks at that point. So I don't know what she's going to say. I don't know if she's just going to lie and say like, yeah, yeah, he kidnapped me and all of a sudden I'm in prison. Or what if they just flat out don't believe her? What if she says, no, 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 he he didn't kidnap me. We're just traveling together. And they're like, no, we don't trust you. Quit, get a hold of him. He's up to no good business. So I'm just standing there shitting myself. And I was trying to sort of toe the line between if I'm too nervous, they're going to think I've done something wrong. But if I'm too relaxed, they're going to think I've done something wrong. So I had to like kind of pace back and forth while not looking too sort of anxious. And um, man, it just that I think she was in that cop car for about 20 minutes, but it felt like a lifetime. You know, that guy was talking to me and we had a really good talk about America and stuff. And 
And then finally they let her go. And she said that while she was in the car, they were basically saying to her, like, if we want to know from you, you just nod your head if there's anything, you know, untoward going on. You know, you just you just say the word and we'll deal with it. We'll we'll get this guy and we'll put him behind bars. You don't have to worry about him anymore. Fortunately, she was saying, look, he's fine. I'm not here against my will. I'm, you know, volunteered to go with him on this trip. So fortunately and eventually she gets let loose. But even after they let her out, they still took about 20 minutes to give us our passports. And it just felt like, again, an eternity um, because I, I only had two days to go in America at that point. And I thought they were going to give me grief for like almost overstaying my visa. So finally, they come to us with our passports. And he and the Border Patrol guy looks and he's like, he's like you've only got two more days. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. And he says, so how are you going to get out of the country? I was like, um, well, the plan is we're going to keep going. We're going to go to New Orleans and then into Mexico. Is like, Oh, Mexico, I wouldn't go there. It's a war zone. He's like, you're you're going to get shot. And I didn't say it at the time, but I thought, well, that's what Canadians told me about America, and here I am alive. Um, but I said, no, I think it's I think it's fine. And um, and then finally, uh, they just said they're like, I just you shouldn't be hitchhiking. And I said, look, I've been doing this for six months now. I appreciate your advice, but we're just gonna hitchhike anyway. So we started walking, and then uh. Yeah, we, we didn't even stick our thumb out and someone pulled over and took us to Biloxi. And it was in Biloxi that we caught the coronavirus. And that is another story for another time. So thank you very much for listening to that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll keep releasing these sort of every intermittently in between videos and stuff because, I mean, so much happened. I mean, even just catch, catching corona, just thinking about it now, that was a time unto itself. But uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to have a new video up soon. Uh, and thus concludes my video. So thank you very much for listening.